Well, good morning, YouTube. All right, guys, we got a lot going on at the house today. Derek is in here working on his dirt bike. Talon is out here working on a painting project for his uh, Volkswagen Jetta Golf. What is it? Golf. golf. For his Volkswagen Golf. Talon's never painted before, and uh, I'm not exactly a good painter, so I'm trying to give him a few tips, but uh, working on that. And over there, we're going to be playing with the struggle bus today. Remember, we got a week until we head to Daytona. We've got to make sure that it's completely ready to go. All right, guys, so it's been a little over a week since we worked on this. Um, we just never came back out here after we found out uh, about uh, Joey's passing. So today what we're focusing on is I think I'm going to pull the fan belts off of it. I want to physically put my hand on that water pump pulley and spin it around and see whether there's any bearing play or any grinding or anything like that. I mean, that doesn't still guarantee that the water pump is good. But before we rip stuff apart, it's a good preliminary type of an inspection. Then the next plan would be to reinstall the thermostat housing without the thermostat in it. That way I can put the hose down in there and I can literally flush the whole system out. Everything else is connected other than the top radiator hose. So it will push water through the block, through the water pump, through the radiator, and then where the top radiator hose comes back into the thermostat housing, it will just dump the water. At least that way I can see how much flow we're getting through everything. If the radiator is restricted in some way, we should be able to see it there. And, uh, and then once the system is full of water, I may leave it open and actually start the engine. That way I can see what the water pump itself is pushing through there. Just trying to check all the flow. It's not going to be easy to replace anything in the front of this. So I just want to make sure that we're doing the right thing rather than going through all that work and it not solving our problem. Hi right, guys. So I ended up taking off both of the fan belts. There's one that goes up to the air conditioner uh, compressor and that's all it does. And the other one goes around the smog pump, the alternator, the crank and the water pump. Um, those belts both need to be replaced, but the air conditioner didn't work on it anyway. So I don't think I'm even going to bother putting the um, air conditioning belt back on. Um, just no, no sense in it, but judging by the condition of this belt, I don't want to try to take a trip to Florida with this old belt. So we will definitely go buy a new one and we'll keep the old one in there just as an emergency backup. But while everything was off, I spun the water pump around. Everything in there feels perfect, smooth. There's no end play. Every, I have no reason to believe that there's anything wrong with the water pump. Now it doesn't mean there can't be a problem with the actual impeller that I cannot see but that's where the next test will come in when we actually try to do a flow test with the engine running. We got a couple things we gotta do in the meantime to do that. Well guys, looks like Talon's got the primer coat on. He's gonna let that sit for a little bit, do another quick sand on it just to make sure everything's flat and smooth. And then he's going to apply his color coat and then the clear coat. All right, guys, so what I'm doing now, as you can see, I've got the garden hose going into the thermostat housing down into the intake manifold. And we are pushing water backwards, actually, through the system. So it's coming back out through the top radiator hose, which normally is where it would exit the engine and go into the radiator. Now it's exiting the radiator and just falling on the ground. This kind of does two things. One, we're checking the actual flow rate through the radiator, and it looks like we have plenty of flow through it. Um, but also, if there was anything kind of lodged up in the radiator fins with us moving it backwards, it should push that stuff out. But I don't really think that is a problem at all. Okay, guys, what I'm going to try now is I've reversed the flow. So now I have the water hose going into the upper radiator hose. That way it's flowing through the radiator, back up to the water pump from the bottom side of the radiator, through the engine, and back out through... The thermostat housing now keep in mind i do not have the thermostat installed right now we wanted that flow restriction out of there to see if there was an additional flow restriction which i don't believe there is so now what i'm going to do is start the engine and in theory we want to get a little bit of water flow coming out with the water hose right now when we start the engine with it running there should be a significantly greater water flow that that water pump should push right up out through there that way we can see if the water pump is actually flowing I'm going to say that the water pump is flowing just fine. <laughs> Looks like we got a squirter. Well, 
Well, it's a good thing I laid all these moving blankets in here to protect the interior because it splashed everywhere. Well, so far we've had the struggle bus running with everything hooked back out for probably almost 30 minutes now. Uh, things seem to be doing pretty well. I can feel that the inlet side of the radiator is definitely warmer than the outlet side of the radiator is. So there's gotta be some kind of a cooling vision going on there. It doesn't seem to be any leaks. Now it's just got water in it and still no thermostat. We're just running it because it really hasn't been run for any length of time in, in months. And then um, if it all works, we'll drain it out. We'll throw some more antifreeze in it and Maybe we'll run it to Daytona without a thermostat in it and see if all the problems go away because then we'll know that maybe that thermostat was just sticking on occasion. And as you can see, Talon is here uh, feeling a little blue. Well, guys, I am definitely not a painter, but uh came out pretty good. I mean, Talon started with the base. I helped him with it, and then uh, I ended up laying all the clear on there. Only got one spot where I had to run in it, and that's because we had to pick a bug out of it. So I, I kind of went heavy with the clear there to fill and uh, just ran it right off the edge. So it was kind of an intentional run. But other than that, it came out pretty good. Slight orange peel to it, but uh, you know, I'm the professional painter, so I think it's looking pretty good. Um, unfortunately, we noticed the problem, and I thought Talon had this figured out beforehand. Here's his old bumper color cover. Here's a new one. I don't think it's a match. Somehow, paint codes must have got mixed up and uh, he didn't do a test panel to verify and uh, I didn't think about it either. So it is what it is, but it's painted and it's pretty. Struggle bus is still back there running. I let it run for about an hour with just water in it and then I drained a little bit off and I added that uh, radiator flush stuff that's supposed to reduce the you know, corrosion and rust and so on and so forth that is in there and it's been running for about 45 minutes with that i'm gonna leave it a little bit longer and we'll flush all that out with fresh water and then we're gonna fill it back up with some antifreeze and hopefully that everything goes well well while the clear coat is drying on talon's car and the struggle bus is cooling down so that we can drain that uh cleaner out of it derek wants to put this ridiculous muffler on his suzuki so he's cut it and modified it but he doesn't know how to weld so I'm going to pull the welder out and see if I can get it welded up for him. Well, guys, I know this video is all over the place. A little jack of all trades. You got some painting, you got some auto repair, and you got some welding. This one's a little bit tricky because if you look here, there's actually quite a bit of a gap between the muffler and this flange here, part of the factory exhaust. So just doing very small stitch welding, taking my time, trying to let it fill. Otherwise, you just end up melting a hole right through this thin stuff. Hey guys, just let a little sneak peek, something for the Street King in a future video. There's like a nut right here. I think this lines up with this. Yeah, you gotta watch it on your tire. <laughs> That's freaking great. Okay. What? Oh, 
Well guys, we run out of light outside, but plus it's 7 p.m. It's dinner time. Tonight we are doing smoked brisket. Zach did the brisket in the smoker that uh, we got him for Christmas. And uh, so far, he's made some really good stuff with it. But we're doing street tacos, but with the smoked brisket. So it smells good, it looks good. We're looking forward to digging in. Well guys, about nine o'clock at night now. Everything's been drained, everything's been refilled. Belts back on. Still no thermostat, but we did top it off with some coolant and uh, she's running great. So I think as of right now, we're gonna let that ride to get to Daytona and see how it does. We've still got a few more things to do to pre-trip on this before we head out. Um, I just checked the training fluid, stuff like that, and it's all good, but uh, I'll wait till I shut it off, let it cool down, I'll check the oil again. We're gonna, you know, check brakes, air pressure, so on and so forth. But for the most part, I think she's gonna make it down there. I'm pretty confident that uh, that thermostat might have just been sticking because we've got no signs of any restriction in the flow and everything seems to be working great here now. In fact, it won't even get up to proper temperature right now, but it's a cool day out and it's just been sitting here idling. So once we put a load on it, get it driving down the road, it'll build a little bit more heat. As long as it doesn't overheat, I'll be perfectly happy with that. Now, normally I don't recommend running without a thermostat, but this is a test procedure. If all the problems go away, then we know that it had to be something with a thermostat restricting the flow. And if that's the case, we'll probably put another thermostat in it later on, but I just wanted to verify that was the problem before going any further because allegedly the thermostat had already been replaced once. So, I don't know, just wanna make sure. All right guys, so we're gonna call this one a success. Looks like everything's running pretty good. And we're also gonna call it the night. It's getting late, it's Sunday night. We got lots to do tomorrow as well. So we're gonna end this one here. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And until the next time we see you, keep those engines running.